Uh, good morning. Welcome back to the site. This is the day after the Meadow Light team was here. And I'm back to get an update. Things are moving really fast. Let me show you what's happening. So I came in up to the site this morning and I found that on the far side over here they're, they're starting to place the rebar inside the framing. And then over here, first roof truss has been placed on the master bedroom. And they're getting ready for subsequent sections right here, prepping it all. So I know there was a, there's been a lot of questions about hollow block and metalite. Like I said, I wasn't poo-pooing hollow block at all. We're using some hollow block here on the pool. Also, there's a lot of discussion on the quality of hollow block because it can vary widely. You can make hollow block with a simple machine and then offer it for sale. The, the key thing with that is how much cement you're using with that mix. So I think the rule of thumb is like 65 or 70 hollow blocks from one bag of cement would be considered strong. Uh, but you could squeeze maybe a 100 or 110 hollow blocks for one bag of cement, but that's going to be very weak. And that's the kind that will literally fall apart in your hand if you're not careful. And I always try to do the, the drop test. Drop it from your waist and see if it, how many pieces you have when it hits the ground. This is one of our blocks. And, and this is definitely on the high end of strong because he's, he's needing to split that block and it's, it's not as easy as you know, some of the weaker ones. I think the going rate is anywhere from 12 to 12 to 18 pesos per block depending on the economy. So yeah, definitely uh, my site is not hollow block free. I'm not sure if, if you can have a site completely free of hollow block, uh, specifically the pool. Uh, there's a certain ingrained method of building swimming pools here and that involves using two hollow block walls as your as your form literally as your as your poured concrete form so it's kind of a sandwich it's a hollow block sandwich <laughs> uh, but in, inside inside that form for the pools they have a lot of rebar to assist on taking up that lateral load when all that water's in there and you also get a lot of pressure from the opposite side pushing into the pool i came around the other side of the property and we've got some roof trusses there ready to go and the guys over here are installing rebar inside the metal light frames So that's what these holes double as, you know, pass-throughs for the rebar as well as access points to get the concrete down in there when, when that time comes. So one of the uh, subscribers had commented what I think he was getting at was can you use metalite, you know, as non-load-bearing uh, capacity? The answer is yes. This is the bodega for the metalite guys. Uh, that they built in about six hours when they came up here and it's simply uh, the metal light frame just like on the on the house with the exception of you're not going to fill it with concrete they just use some cheap plywood here because it's a temporary structure but if you were going to put this in non load bearing surface uh, inside the house like making a closet here or something like that you could easily use drywall or hardy board on here and just leave it hollow inside. I'm going to take a walk down and look at the pond site. We've had a, a couple decent rains, so I want to see what happened. See if it's too too muddy or not to go down in there. And I bought a, uh, a it's like a bug net for your head. Let's see if I could put this on. Believe it or not, it can help until we get some some decent landscaping going on cut down on the insects 
but it, it does kind of look like I'm going out getting ready to commit a crime. <laughs> well, the, the earth is damp, but it's not, not too bad. I think we can do some work here. The advice I got from some of the local farmers here was if, if I'm going to do this, go at least four feet deep. Uh, rationale being in the summer, the, the water could get too hot for the fish. So if we're going to go four feet, we've got a lot of work to do. That tree there in the middle, I've been debating on whether to take it out or try to save it. So we're, we're going to try to save it and make that an island. And uh, same thing with these these trees. I don't want to ruin these trees on the outline here, so I'm going to build up some dirt and make like little peninsulas around these trees. Yeah, I, I don't mind taking bananas out because they'll grow anywhere. And you can almost watch a banana tree grow. But I hate to, I hate to take out a fruit tree that you know it's six or seven years just getting it. You know, to stand on its own, basically, in a, in a high wind. I hate to rip those out. Same thing, I know before I said coconut trees grow fast, but not, not really. <laughs> it takes a long time for a coconut to get up to the fruit, fruit bearing stage, you know, where it gets up to about 60 to 80 feet tall especially some of these these trees that they uh, they bear a lot of sweet fruit so my plan is one of these days to either get some signs made or make some signs myself uh, you know to put in front of the tree you know basically what what kind of tree is that <laughs> you know locals don't need it but I sure do. Here's an example how a banana just decided to grow right there next to this this tree here. One thing I didn't know about bananas is like they're a one-time good deal. Once the banana bears fruit, that's it. You have to rip out the stump. I guess you call it a stump. But you rip that out and it sprouts a new a new one. And those bananas are, banana stumps are hard to get rid of too because just like coconut, they got so much water content, you can't burn them. These pieces of coconut tree, we cut those down, you know, back when we started this thing. And I clamped onto it with the excavator and it's still got, squeezes out a lot of water inside. So it's tough. Got one of the trusses going up over here. I was over here looking at the supplies and I saw these galvanized strips. These are looks like about a one one inch. Don't tell anybody, but I've been looking for something like this. I need this in the garage. Hopefully no one will say anything. I'm taking it with me. I'm up here at the, the right front corner of the property. The bluff is just over this this hill here. And they have created a, a temporary pad. This is a temporary pad for the temporary water tank. They're gonna bring a 1,000 liter temporary tank. I don't know when it's gonna get here, but 
this might this might be permanent because it's a little too close to the tree for my comfort but somewhere around here around this area off to the side of the property I need a place to put our our permanent water tank which is going to be 2,000 liter tank and it's gonna go I want it to go here because just over the hill is where the Chateau Deef is and of course the deep well is inside the Chateau Deef. I'm gonna bury a water line coming up the hill and into the tank somewhere here we discussed some options about putting the tank inside the home because we're going to move the pool equipment forward under the floor right next to the pool be less complex and the pressure and the suction um, wouldn't have any drop you know minimum drop since the equipment's right there next to the pool we won't have to even look at it we wouldn't have to waste that space of an entire room for a mechanical equipment so we were floating the idea of putting the water tank inside that room i just couldn't envision uh, taking up all that space just for a water tank uh, on the other hand i don't i don't want to see it i don't want to look at it the water tanks here are either stainless steel or molded plastic and they're not terribly unsightly but who wants to look at a steel tank in your front yard or backyard or wherever it's going to be so what I was thinking is that similar to the Chateau d'If I'm going to uh, design a, a fake uh, windmill over the tank so I think I could use some river, river stones and build up a pedestal around the tank and then use some uh, <laughs> maybe use metalite or treated wood to form up a, a windmill you know just like you see in Holland not as big of course so it's just for aesthetics and then we'd, we would just bury the the water line from here into the what will, what will become the pump room so inside that room instead of a a big tank we'll just have uh, some small water pumps and I'm using the same water pump that uh, we use in the garage it's it's a German brand it doesn't need an accumulator so it's very small it's just an on-demand positive pressure pump very cool it works great in the garage so I figured we could probably use it up here here I'm walking down the old horse trail but you can see the Chateau Deef right here as far as the Chateau Deef they've uh, they finished the roof I'll get a close-up view of that and they're adding some plaster in between the river stones on the walls I think that'll keep them busy until the the, the roof is cured yeah, probably three weeks yeah and uh, when that's done they can start ripping out the, the forms there's a close-up of the Chateau Deef they've they've been starting on the plastering of the of the river stones on the wall and now beginning to eventually plaster the corona here's the the roof and what they've done is to just searched around for a, a flatter type of stone and laid it on top of the concrete and then plastered that in so it's semi smooth it'll give the rain a, you know easy easy path to exit off of the scupper drains really coming along I was first I was thinking just leave the stones you know exposed and, and not do any any plastering and uh, I was just going to hit it with a power washer and get off 
the excess cement and then just let mother nature do its patina on there some moss and stuff but uh, they, they did this and I think it looks looks pretty cool I think I'll still I'll still power wash this once it's set up and then uh, I'll either let the mother nature thing to go or I'll um, I'll hit it with some of this uh, solvent it's a solvent based uh, clear lacquer I don't know if lacquer is the right word. I think you know what I mean. It'll give the rocks a nice shiny appearance, not to mention it'll, uh, it'll aid in the waterproofing. This is the exit of the water, and we're going to have to bury a conduit up there. And that's where I was standing, talking about the possible windmill. But it's going to be a chore to, to bury that. But the good news is there should be no reason for foot tra traffic over here, so we won't have to go terribly deep. I just didn't want to see an exposed water pipe. I think once once I run a conduit, I'm going to run electrical wire through there for future use because we're thinking about tapping the line that's above me to power the pump in here. But that might go away someday. So I'm going to pre-plan some electrical wire in a separate conduit, of course, with the, next to the water pipe, and also uh, run some Cat 6 cable or fiber, because you know, who doesn't want Wi-Fi in Chateau Deef? I just walked over to the bridge. I'll give you a shot of the, the river on your left as you walk away from the house. The, the water's normally very clear. You can see all the way to the bottom, but when we get any kind of rain, it'll cloud up you know, for a day, half a day, and then it'll, it'll go back to clear again. And then on this side of the bridge is, I would say, the you know the swimming area. Sometimes they they block off the water a little bit to make it a little deeper so people can swim and the kids like to jump off this bridge but that's only about four four and a half feet this little stream is also healthy if you look right there it's a dead crab <laughs> so I'm pointing at my healthy stream by showing you a dead crab but uh, there must be more they I mean he's he's dead that's why he's not hiding but it's a pretty big crab and if you look really close there's there's little fish down there I can't remember the name but they're they're like freshwater anchovies and then sometimes if you're you're really looking for them there's brine shrimp real little tiny shrimp and uh, you scoop them up with a net but plenty of life in here. 